Your Coca-Cola Bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, are you sure you won't feel silly? Now, why on earth should I feel silly? Well, I mean, you're, you're not a nurse. I'm a husband, and there are many times when it's practically the same thing. Well, if you do feel silly, the nurse will be happy to help me. I believe it is not only my duty, but my right and my pleasure as your husband, Mrs. Norton, to help you on your first walk down the hospital corridor. Oh, so impressive. Well, if you don't mind, I really prefer you to any old nurse any old day. Mm. That's not much of any old compliment. <laughs> I remember, Dr. Rowland said just once down the corridor and back, that's he, all. He, he didn't say that to me. He, he said just it to me. said, Mrs. Norton, today you walk. Dr. Rowland and I are in cahoots, so it's I just down so. the corridor and back. So he'll be back this afternoon to see that you didn't do more. Oh, poof. Well, that's hardly even walking. It's hardly worth the trip. Mm-hmm. Well, well, you're on your legs before you feel so brash and adventuresome. That's exactly how I feel. I feel a little... Was he? Here. Here are your slippers. Can you manage to put them on? Now, what do you take me for? A conceited young woman who has a son only four and a half days old. Goodness, he's still so young? Now, here. You sit on the edge of the bed. I'll slip your slippers on for you. Go away, go away, go away. Shoe fly! Look, you can bully your nurse, you can bully your doctor, you can bully your mother, but you can't bully me, you I hear? can't. No, so shut up while I put them on for you. Oh, I love you when you're so manly. Well, you'd never know it. You don't give me much chance. One slipper? Two slippers? No. Want to rest a little? Yeah. So much work for me for you to put on my slippers. <laughs> or something. <laughs> it was by God. You know, I think you're a little girl whose eyes are bigger than her muscles. Very funny. Hand me my bathrobe. Madame? If you please. Madame, your cloak. Oh, this feels so good. Oh, there we are. All ready to slide off the bed. Hmm. Madame, my arm. Shall we dance? <laughs> <laughs> first things first. Now. David, now you're treating me as if I were an invalid. That's the way you should be treated. Oh. A mental invalid. Woof to you. Woof to you. <laughs> I am now standing and perfectly. Ooh. What's the matter? Well, that's the strangest thing. I can't find my legs. Really? They're, they're right there. Under you. David, they feel so thin. <laughs> they, uh, they look all right. The rest of me is so heavy. I thought after the baby I'd feel light, but I well, I certainly never felt this way before. <laughs> Not even after your tonsils. I was too little to appreciate it. <laughs> Say, I'd forgotten you stood up to here on me. Just perfect. David. Now, here's my arm, darling. Now, would you like it? Oh, David, it feels so good. So strong. Now to open the door and have a stab at the hall. Hmm? Goodness, it seems a long way from here. Well, I'll race you down to the end. I feel like a calf. All of me strong set me legs. Christopher Robin goes hoppity, 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 hop. Whenever I tell him politely to stop it, he says he can't possibly stop. Unquote. The end? The end. How are you doing? Terrible. Now that I've found my legs, I've lost my breath. <laughs> Where do you think? In my room. Oh, I'll go back and get it. I have an idea we'll find it again in front of the nursery, though. The nursery? Mm -hmm. It's right down the hall here. Oh, David, you're dangling a carrot in front of my nose. No, it's just a few more steps, my little pony. Honestly, what a business. Nobody told me. You really hate not being your own boss, don't you? Is that awful? It's stubborn, willful, conceited, proud, and... A great relief to any husband. Now, don't you ever talk to me like that in front of our son, you hear? Then I'd better shut up, because here we are. Mrs. Norton, may I present you your son? Second from the left in the first row. You don't say. Look at him, sound asleep. <laughs> Is that all he can think to do? I don't think he's very handsome. I can't understand he... why he looks so old. Bags under his eyes, pouches on his cheek. Half ball. <laughs> he looks like the high llama of Tibet now, or listen, something. I can say those things, but you can't. <laughs> also, he's lazy, shiftless. Sleep, snooze, slumber. Hmm, what a life. Isn't it? It's 
wonderful living. You're really pretty pleased with life, aren't you? Not a complaint. That's because you're not afraid of it. It's funny, but I didn't have one premonition of anything going wrong. Mm -hmm. I was excited, maybe even afraid a little, but never felt anything would go wrong. wonder if all women feel like that. I wonder. I'm sure they do before, but afterwards, if it doesn't go right, they think they didn't expect it to. All those closed doors up and down this corridor. I wonder how many happy endings. Oh, most of them. I couldn't have taken it if anything had... Darling, if your hands are cold, I'd better get you back to bed. Yes, David, I'd like to now. Well, so long, boy. See you later, huh? Goodbye. Sweet dreams. You sleepy darling. Another parent would say that he looks as if he understood. We're not that kind of parent. Are you? Of course I aren't. <laughs> Now, go on, darling. Don't, don't be afraid to lean on me. So help me. Tomorrow I will stand on my head as if nothing had happened. You'd probably do a lot better on your head today. Why? Your legs aren't as accustomed to being weak. Oh, you are sweet. Nothing. Just for that, I'll manage the rest of this corridor under my own power. Thank you. Thank you, conceded. Huh. Well, this is much better. I suspect that you have been using me as a crutch instead of vice versa. That's just the kind of guy I am. Just two more doors and I'm home. I never thought I'd be so happy to see that hospital bed again. <laughs> sort of nice to know that you've a flaw like the rest of us, Mrs. Superwoman. Well, this flaw is not my fault. If I'd been allowed out of bed the day after instead of three days after, I'd be out dancing by now. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Here we are. Oh, look. Isn't that bed beautiful? I can just get into it. Aren't you even going to take off your robe? I am. Not the best people in the world sit in bed with their robes on. And their slippers? Oh, all right. I'll take them off. But just for you. Thanks. <sighs> now the world is perfect again. If I had the strength, I'd kick myself for being so weak. But I know I have the strength. <laughs> Why don't you uh, force yourself to take a little nap? Me? Mm -hmm. Sleep? In the middle of the day? Mm -hmm. I think I'd love to. <laughs> Good. Darling, I'll run along to the office, but I'll be bit l back later this afternoon. David, listen, if you're busy and tired, you, you, you go right home. I miss you, but don't get yourself exhausted just to keep me company. Now, what makes you think I'd go out of my way to be with you? Because you're such a nice guy. You love underdogs. You're prejudiced. <laughs> now, my underdog, a kiss on your brow... And I am gone. Thanks for the walk and for everything. Thank you for everything. Mm -hmm. And good night with roses. Sweet eyes. La, 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 la. Come in. Oh, Dr. Roland, I've been expecting you. I walked. All the way down and back. Well, well, well. You know, I wouldn't exactly want to walk home, but I wouldn't mind going home. Oh, that'll come soon enough. Another couple of days. I'm so well, I don't see why you waste your time on me. Well, then you don't like seeing me. I love it, but it really isn't fair to all the other people who really need you. You're very flattering today, my child. You know, I was just thinking when I heard your voice outside my door. Yours must be the most satisfactory work in the world. At times. Just think of all the people you make happy. There's David, Mama, me. All sorts of people. You really have something to show for your work. That's one of the reasons I went into obstetrics. It's the one certain occasion when a person is pleased to go to a hospital. But every now and then there's a tough one. There was one this morning, wasn't there? I wondered behind which closed doors. You have a good view from this room, don't you? Beautiful, I can see the whole city. Was it the baby or the mother? The baby, born dead. The baby. They're so small when they're born. No wonder they ever start breathing and crying. It's the miracle that doesn't always fulfill itself. And when it doesn't... The mother will have other children. Not this one. Oh. Poor woman... She know yet? 
No, she's still asleep. Do you wonder why she was chosen for this great disappointment, won't she? And there'll be no answer for her. Hmm. None that I can give. On occasion, a doctor is a very helpless man. Until I had my baby, I didn't appreciate what losing him would mean. It may sound strange to you, but with birth, I had my first real glimpse of death. Yes? It's the balance of things. Gain, you lose for every life. The balance. Dr. Rowland, the scales can't always tip the way we like, no matter what we do. We don't control the scales. We try awfully hard, so hard that sometimes we think we've mastered them. When I lose a child, I wonder. If it weren't for you... I'll always remember that my child had the best possible start. He was brought into the world by a doctor who had the humility to blame himself for death and never to take the praise for life. I don't think there could be a finer man. I, I wish there was something I could do for that mother. Uh, thank you, my dear. Oh, well, there, there might be a that. If there is, I will call on you. I'll go down the hall now. Perhaps she's awakened now. It was... It was just down the hall. Oh, dear God. I have been lucky. There's a pleasant custom growing among women during marketing. Instead of getting all worn out, toting bundles, and waiting in line at counters, they now step up to that friendly red cooler for ice-cold Coca-Cola. For they've discovered that marketing is easier when you shop refreshed. Well, what do you think of the patient, Mr. King? Pretty remarkable patient, I'd say. But then I've always thought that Claudia was a pretty remarkable woman. She is indeed. She has a unique insight into the more important relationships in life. Understanding without experience. Mm. No, that's very rare. Too rare. But I think I'm going to take advantage of it. You're going to take advantage of it? Uh, how? Well, you know that woman down the hall who lost a child. Mm. Well, you were just talking about her to Claudia. That's right. I think Claudia can help me out with that case. There are times when a doctor can't cure. But a woman with feeling and intelligence... Like Claudia, can. Well, Dr. Rowland, I'll uh, certainly be here on Monday to find out just what you mean by that. Thanks for tipping me off. See you Monday, Mr. King. Good day. Good day, Dr. Rowland. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>